This is the men's room. Get it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. <laughs> the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. I knew someone who once had blank for a pet, 844 Ola. <laughs> comment that just came in. My brother raised a sheep from the 4-H. It became a pet to him. She was tasty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. Well, there's an end game there. Well, sure. I mean, I got, if the brother's in on it, you know, that's one thing, man. You know, and, uh, I hate doing it, but I have to say it to my daughter every time. She'll, you know, she's at that stage. Everything's so cute. Uh, 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 but she does it in that super high pitch voice, right? So she'll see a lamb. And she's like, oh, it's so cute. I'm like, it tastes as good as it looks, baby. I just, <laughs> it lives up to the hype. I'm going to be honest with you. It tastes every bit as good as it looks. Hello, Brandon. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. So I've had uh, I've had the typical raccoon and possum and no, that's, that's not a, typical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did not have a typical raccoon or possum as a pet. Tell that to a hot girl at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's a typical it pet, works, you know. They want to come home and see it. Sure, Trust me, it works. Okay, <laughs> the hedgehog. But uh, but what I call is because I actually uh, have caught by hand scorpions over in Eastern Washington and kept them as pets. And what do you do with them? I mean, other than just look, look at, at them. them and there's nothing else, right? But, I mean, pretty much. You know, uh, it, after a while, you can hold them. Yeah. It was always kind of nerve wracking to hold them. Yeah, because that's a they're, scorpion. They're not. They're not big enough to really do any damage. They were all pretty small, and they're not not super venomous. But yeah, they're kind of cool. You know, feed them crickets and and things like that. That's always kind of neat. But yeah, I've had a I've had a lot of odd. Odd things growing up. Uh, my dad actually right now has a possum as a pet. Why? I mean, what are they? What, <laughs> what is the, the do, end do, game? Do you rescue it? it in the yard? It was left behind by its mother. Like, how does one acquire a possum? Um, so they were having problems. My my cousin was having a problem with the possum getting into her chicken coop. So they trapped it and then found out that it was a, a mama possum with a bunch of babies. So my dad took one of the babies and has raised that over the last. Yeah, it's got to be coming on two years now. Okay, no, I got to ask. All right. So the possum's in the house at all times? Yes. Litter box, newspaper, where does the possum go to the bathroom? So it's actually, he's in a big bird cage. And if you, the bird cages have kind of a, a secondary bottom to it. So, I mean, he just goes in the corner, and then every so often you just slide out that little, that tray in the bottom. So he's, ba okay. so he's basically on a grid. He's on like a metal grid. Yeah, I and he mean, waffle stomps that down, and then you just collect the papers, <laughs> right. basically. I right. follow. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. I got but, it. What yeah. you doing? Uh, That's a big log. I don't like, know if it's going to make it through there. Oh, yeah, there the, goes. the possum waffle stop. <laughs> Keep his cage clean. That's right. That's I'll just right. lay. I'll just lay on it. See right. if I can smush it down. There you go. There you go. Roll around in a little right, bit. Right, sure. Um, a little that stink but, uh, on. And we've had we've had a raccoon. We had a raccoon for about a year and a half. And then what happens? I mean, yeah, all these people, like, I had it for a little while. And then what happens at the end of a year and a half? So once he got into breeding season, uh -oh. he, he got a little more aggressive. Funny how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. So we kept him, we kept him in a, a big dog kennel and, you know, would, would try and play with him as much as possible. But with his aggression, it was kind of mm -hmm. hard to do. He's taking longer showers. <laughs> <laughs> right. What are you doing in there? Hey, man, come on, you're using all the water up. Cleans himself so, a little after longer. A while, <laughs> after a while, he just wasn't as as friendly as he was in the beginning. So okay. we just we kind of left the cage open, and he'd come and go as he pleased. And one day, he never came back. Is there any um, group of animal on earth that gets more pleasant once it discovers and wants to get laid? People certainly don't, right? Like kids uh, are fun and they're innocent, like, but yeah, once we hit puberty. There, and look, you can still be cool, but there's a defit right. Now you feel competitive in a different way, and it's a complete change of your view of the world, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. Like, yeah, once it gets horny, things change, man. I uh, knew someone who once had a blank for a pet, 844-999-OLA. I mean, even just that time of year, right? You talking about humans? No, I'm well, <laughs> talking about summer. I'm talking about like animals getting the rut or whatever. Right, like, everything changes, even if yeah. it's just that season. But it's like, yeah, things are. Let's just say things are a little ticky tacky right now. Hello, Todd. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Hola. Hola. 
How's it going, boys? Doing good, Todd. Thanks, man. Right on. So I once knew this guy. He was a co-worker. His name was Donnie. Donnie was that guy. He was a single guy, <laughs> lived on the golf course, had, he had to have the best of everything. But anyway, he'd always tell us he had this African serval, and nobody believed that, and nobody even really knew what it was. Okay. I've never even heard of I've that. I've never heard of it. Yeah. What is a it's serval? It's like a, it's like a, a really big cat. It looks like a cheetah. Oh, almost, yeah. Okay. But it's probably yeah. only about Maybe two feet tall, weighs 50, 60 pounds, and somewhere in there. Okay. <laughs> so everybody was calling him out one night. We were working swing shift. We got off at 11. Um, so we're like, dude, we'll cover you. Just go. And he lived right close. He lived on the golf course, right close to the brewery here in Tomorrow. We're like, go get your cat, bring it back, and we'll check it out. So he took off, went out. Well, when you pull out of the parking lot, there was this little local bar everybody went to, got real busy at shift change. Um, he brought the cat back, and it was everything he said it was. Um, <laughs> first time I met it, I, it was that night at the bar when he brought it there. I never knew. His name was BJ. I never knew who BJ was uh, declawed on the front. So, so when he, he swiped at you, I'm he, guessing, yeah. What's that? Say So what? When it swatted at you, did you almost drop a load in your pants? Oh, dude, yeah. Well, <laughs> he yeah, he brought it in. The girls were drooling all over. He goes, here, I'll play fetch. So he handed me the tennis ball, and all of a sudden, BJ's all over me. So I'm playing fetch with the tennis ball, and I throw it across the bar. He would clear the pool table lengthways in one jump and grab the ball. Well, after a while, he kind of got tired of playing fetch. He was just laying there. Well, this was 18, 20 years ago before picture phones and stuff. So I had my little disposable camera that were pretty prevalent back then. Zip, 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 so I'm running over and was going to take some pictures, and I laid down in front of it, and I'm taking pictures, and all of a sudden I look in the camera to take another picture, and he's not there. And right about the time I realized he wasn't there, he landed on my back and started <laughs> smacking me. <laughs> oh, he batted me like 20, 30 times in about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this before I knew he wasn't declawed, but he, like, batted me. I screamed like a little girl, dude. I jumped up, spilled my beer. All my coworkers are laughing. Everybody's laughing. Uh, how, how, did the yeah, pictures, how did the pictures turn out? Um, They turned out pretty good. I got some good ones. It's too bad that the phones <laughs> didn't exist because I would have loved to see the that's video. That's something I'd like yeah, to see. I am kind of curious. Like, what kind of bar back then is like, hey, man, I'm going to get my 50-pound uh, African serval, whatever it's called. I mean, it looks like bring a it small in cheetah bobcat. And it's going to jump over your pool table. And all the good stuff. You cool? Cool. That would be a country bar. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. Probably not in a hotel lobby. Hello, Ken. Welcome to a men's room. Hola. Hola. So when my dad was a young man, uh, he did some work over in Saudi Arabia. And he'd been there for a couple months and was getting kind of lonely. So we thought he'd go down to the market and pick up a pet. So he's walking around down there. He sees a guy with a monkey for sale. And the monkey is sitting on this guy's shoulder, just hanging out, uh, doing some tricks. My dad thinks this would be great. I'll have a pet monkey. So he pays the guy about 200 bucks. And the guy loads the monkey into the cage, and my dad carries this cage back to his apartment. He goes back to the apartment, lets the monkey out. The monkey runs straight across the apartment, up his curtains, and stays at the top of his curtains, screaming at him and just pooping down his curtains. <laughs> dad's trying to develop friendship with this monkey, trying to lure him down with some snacks, uh, left some water out. He never saw that monkey come down from those curtains for a week, just sat up there screaming at him and making a bigger mess on his curtains. So after about a week of this, uh, his neighbor across the hall comes and knocks on his door. He goes, hey, um, I've actually got a great recipe for monkey barbecue. You sell me this monkey for 50 bucks, and you come over and have some monkey barbecue. So I was going, yeah, this sounds like a great deal. This monkey, uh, he is not getting anywhere. So uh, sell this guy this monkey. Get some monkey barbecue out of it. So let me get the story straight. Your father has a job in Saudi Arabia. He gets lonely and buys a monkey. And for a yes, week sir. straight, a monkey poops on his curtains. And after this, he sells it to a cook to eat the monkey in barbecue form. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. right there. And that's the circle of life, wow. kids. Jeez, oh, that's a Disney movie waiting to happen, isn't it? Men's or black question. I know someone who once had blank for a pet. <laughs> Hello, Kim. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, guys. Hola. Hi. Hola. Hola. So I have a chiropractor in Ken, Dr. Babick, who used to own tigers. And they've since passed away and he had them stuffed. 
Oh. And now during Christmas time, he brings them into his office and puts them in there because evidently where he keeps them at home is where they put the Christmas tree. Okay. So he how them how, in how, every year and how big is so like his wife's money. telling him, "Hey, it's Christmas time. We need room for the Christmas tree. You got to you got to yeah. put the tiger somewhere." And the only thing he can think of is, "Look, I got to bring him to the office because I need that space for my Christmas." You got tree. a picture of this thing? I do actually. Could you send nice. it to us? Seriously, our uh, email is, is the men's room at uh, mensroomlive.com. Do you give us permission to share that on our Facebook and all that stuff? Of course. All right. Okay. Well, if you like the men's room on Facebook, we'll, uh, we'll let you see that picture. I want to see, see a stuffed tiger. So do I. <laughs> I want to go to this doctor. <laughs> I just like the idea that it's like, look, man, I didn't bring these here to impress you. I brought them here. All right, because I need I, the room because this is where my tree is. Christmas tree. Yeah. And when I, the kids I, are done with the gifts, you know, by what? what's the proper date, do you think, Ted? The latest you should have your Christmas tree up. January 10th? All right, so... That's fair. Say by, yeah. by January 14th, second week, the, the tigers uh, disappear to the office, they go back home. But, Ted, also based on your Christmas decoration theory, those tigers should never show up before... Oh, Thanksgiving. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. So for the Friday holidays... After Thanksgiving, the tigers, put the tiger in the office. <laughs> I'll tell you what, now why put not? put up the Christmas tree and put the tiger in the office. That's what Christmas means to me. That's There's a tiger, <laughs> stuffed tiger in the office. I mean, if I had that guy's house and that tiger, I would maybe decorate yeah. the tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Honest to God. What's under the tiger this year, Dad? Or put, or put like, <laughs> I don't know. Put lights around Hopefully his neck. Hopefully tiger no, falls dude, dude, you could put like reindeer antlers on him. You know what I mean? Like really put lights around the And then those kids antlers. are like, you didn't grow up with a Christmas tiger? Or you could put a red nose yeah. on his nose. What's this Santa Claus? Santa, oh, that, 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 Santa that, that, who? That, that, yeah, that's so that, weird, that, man. Just get a tiger. It's the magic Christmas tiger. When I was a kid, the tiger made all my memories. <laughs> Still to come, who's next? Last one, drink and tell us with a shot of the day. And we've got your emails and uh, birthday requests coming up from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Coming up, a little drink and toast with Shadow Day. First time for a few emails here from the men's room at mensroomlive.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. And from our question today, I knew someone who once had blank for a pet. Guys, my ex-wife's parents were looking for a pet to help keep his wife occupied at home. And they looked for pets for about two weeks. When they finally decided on the pet they wanted, uh, called us to come over and see it. As we're walking down the drive to the back of their house, we heard a, a piercing scream. And there it was. Uh, it is a, a Vietnamese black pot belly pig. That's where the squealing was coming from. Started laughing and took two grown men almost 30 minutes to get a body harness on that pig. That from the Bonnie Lake Cowboy. Guys have had all manner of crazy rescue animals, but there have been a few I have said no to. Someone was trying to find a home for a crazy rhesus lab monkey. I'd always wanted a monkey as a child, so I went to take a look at him. Little guy would look in uh, lock his crazy eyes on mine. And masturbate with a creepy little grin. <laughs> oh, that uh, oh. pretty much is all he would do. Little dude had snapped long ago. Sad, but nothing I could help with. He ended up going uh, to a monkey rescue. That from uh, <laughs> a monkey rescue that from Paula. Yeah, yeah, that monkey. It was it was mind deafening. The monkey rescue. Yeah. I'm a bearded dragon named Spaz. The little guy is about seven years old, and now my five year old son uh, puts Spaz on his toy trucks and takes him for a ride around the house. I also had a, a, a tortoise named Lilo, but she got so big I found someone with a huge yard to take her in. Love the show from Josh. Guys, a friend's a cousin needed us to watch his pet squirrel monkey for a few days. Having a monkey as a pet isn't that rare, but what he had been feeding it was terrible. He brought the monkey over in a dog kennel and said, there's his food. It was Fruit Loops and Dum Dums, the Jesus. suckers. We thought that had to be terrible for the monkey and looked up what they eat. One thing was frogs. This was in Arkansas and happened to be the time of year when tree frogs were all over the windows. We'd throw a few to the monkey and he'd have one in each hand eating away. Good times. That's from Zach. Fruit Loops and what was it? Dum Dums? Yeah. Damn. My dad and uh, his cousin growing up on the Colorado River in Southern California would in the spring go hunting for baby skunks. They would catch them, de-skunk them, and sell them as pets. Uh, they did it according to uh, my aunt for nearly five years. It's how they made extra cash to play all summer. My uh, great, uh, great aunt had a pantry full, I mean full, of tomato juice to de-stink them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, birthday request, guys. Hola, Bicholos. Today is my son Achilles' eighth birthday. Achilles. He's been listening to The Rock since uh, he was born. I just want to wish him a happy birthday. Can he get a little kid's fish sandwich and a big old Leroy Jenkins? Uh, thank you, guys. That from Lee. Fish salad. Let's do this. Leroy! 
Just birthday request. Uh, shout out to my beautiful wife, Trisha. We are new parents of twins and were born on my birthday two weeks ago. And we listened to the men's room in the hospital to kill time. So thank you guys for the laughs. How about a suck it up cupcake and the dirty Germans talking about twins? Sorry, boys. It's a boy and a girl, not two twin girls. Thanks. That from Devin. So suck it up, cupcake. Yeah, I cannot give birth, but I have a pair of twins I would like to introduce you to. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are German. We don't mind. Just bring the twins. They can be man and woman. <laughs> yeah. But you always like to uh, request a birthday shout out. Uh, let's see here. Oh, God, what am I doing? Uh, to uh, Chrissy, uh, pronounced uh, Chrissy uh, Nikki. Uh, can you give her a Leroy Jenkins since all she wanted for her birthday was the new World of Warcraft expansion and maybe a get or two from Thrill. Uh, thanks, guys. And Wobbin, that from Terry. Let's do this, Leroy! Get! Get! Guys, just wanted you to uh, wish my good friend Amber, and yes, she's named Amber, a birthday wish, and some dirty German talking about holes. Love you guys. Keep on rocking. That from Michael. Yeah, I'm going to treat you like a three hole golf course. Yeah, speaking of holes, I'm going to treat you like Shia LaBeouf and just watch myself the whole time. <laughs> Well, I give a birthday shout out to Angus. I love you, babe. Uh, you've changed my life for the better so many ways. How about some uh, turtle wax with your penis is too small? Thanks, guys, from Crystal. <laughs> That's my best friend. I love my life, Savannah, the butthead. She's 23. How about a couple fish sandwiches? Thanks, guys. Fish sandwich? Can I buy you a fish sandwich? Here at the Men's Room and Wobbin. It's my hot wife, Moose. Fabulous 26th birthday again. There's just not a better person out there. Please have the dirty Germans explain the benefits of getting hot and sweaty. That from Bear. Yeah, Bear. First, I want to say any woman named Moo must be sexy. Milk her like you would the animal. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, Bear. Seems like this Moo's having a lot of birthdays. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All of the is my brother Kyle listens to you guys all the time. His birthday is today. Could you please give me a birthday shout out? Also, really wants to hear a Ted from Melbourne, if you could. Thanks, guys. That from Karina. Yeah, Karina. Happy birthday. Ted from Melbourne here. You know, why don't you come over and then maybe you can I hop in your pouch? <laughs> I heard it's room. Roomy. Warm. Friendly. Guys, my birthday today. None of my friends listen to your show, so I got to do it myself. Can I get a oh, look out, please? Thanks, guys. Uh, that from uh, Ralden. Uh oh, look out. Guys, birthday. I work at a pot shop, so I have to send my own request because of lazy and forgetful stoners. So <laughs> can I get the uh, dirty Germans uh, talking about weed? Thanks, guys. That from Susie, who says hi, Ted. Yeah, according to Miles, if we mix our weed together, I can toss the salad with you. Yeah, I like weed. It involves a lot of branches and strains. Also gets me high. Yeah, but you must remove seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or put them somewhere else, <coughs> Susie. <laughs> Guys, long time listener from your Baltimore days, and it is my 40th birthday. Can I get the birthday song? That would be great. Thanks, bitches. That from Tina. Listening in Baltimore. She says, I forgot to mention I was once pulled into the office and uh, admonished for my random outbursts of laughter when I would listen to you guys at work uh, wearing the headphones. <laughs> you guys rock. Give her a traffic jam, Jimmy. Original fish sandwich, if we could. Jeez, ah, Louise. Fish yeah. sandwich. And that was a uh, Old Bay fish sandwich. Right? Yes, it's Dave. So that's Baltimore, it. Tina. There you go, Oof. Tina. Guys, uh, I complete my 30, uh, 41st orbit around this big ball of glass. Uh, I've got a trifecta for yes, you guys maybe. today. Uh, ladies first, Jillian, pronounced Jill, is turning 20-something today. I don't know exactly. It is impolite to ask a lady about her age. How about the dirty Germans asking her a couple of inappropriate questions, please? Yeah, the only thing I can think to ask you, actually, is I actually need to make some change. Do you have two nipples for a dime? Yeah, as long as we're asking inappropriate questions about your age, I guess. Obviously, I would need to know your weight. <laughs> is that your natural hair color? Guys, next up is Chris Johnson, my Valiant Marine Combat veteran co-worker. He is 27. Give him a barbershop corset, uh, quartet fish sandwich, please. Is it too early for a fish sandwich? A uh, cheese and tartar on the side. Oh, yeah. I smell the fish sandwich. Maybe some dill relish in the morning. morning. At noon. At noon. And at night. And at night. 
Hey, hey guys, finally for me, Matt, I just want to hear a ladies' man fish sandwich. Thanks, guys, and rock on. Can I buy you a fish sandwich? Shout out for uh, birthday bestie Susie with some uh, dirty Germans. And you uh, guys, uh, that from uh, Jazz, P.S., best radio show out there. Thank you. Ah, yeah, that is very kind of you to say. I do not know about you, but I like seafood. Tonight I am thinking clams. Yeah, and jazz. It's going to be similar, similar but it's going to replace that A with a different letter. Yeah, it won't be jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, they will be handy. <laughs> Guys, this is my husband's 46th one. Uh, let's see here. How about giving an original fish sandwich followed by an Allen Thick? And uh, maybe some dirty Germans. Thanks, guys. And rock on that from Anna, a.k.a. The Road Tramp. That's fun. Yeah, I want to wish you a very happy birthday, but I want you to blow on my candle. Yeah, maybe snuff it out a little bit. Yeah, and oddly enough, when you blow it out, the wax shoots out of it. Mm. Don't worry, the wax turns hard. But all, shout out to my dad, Rob. He turns a big five. Oh, today, just want to know, uh, show him how much we love and care for him. So could you please give him a uh, turtle wax with the Montgomery and the paws, and maybe your penis is too small in the other. He has been a dedicated listener since show number one. Thanks for making us day. And keep on rocking. That from your kick-ass family, we love you. Today's my dad's 52nd birthday. His name is Mark. Couldn't ask for a better dad. Uh, my dad and I both enjoy listening to your show. How about a big old bong rip? Please and thank you that from Mark. All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you, bitch! Yaz, a dirty German, brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, Men's Room Live dot com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, Schweinefleisch. Uh, don't send an email like this. Oh boy! All right, please. That's serious. Do not send one, but I'll read it anyway. Ola Men's Room. Ola. The first time I heard your show when I was around five or six years old. Jesus Christ. Listening to the cool music in my dad's truck. I turned 20 today, and your show is still the best one out there. Thank you for all you do. You guys make me laugh. Let's give him a Ray Lewis. That from Jordan. Didn't want to forget. It's time to take off the leash. I also want to remind everyone to Damn. not send an email. Tell us how long you've been listening. Tell me this kid's only eight. Yeah, that's what I need to hear. Going back uh, 10 and years, you guys. look like crap, Miles. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I feel It's been a hard 15 years. It really has been rough. <laughs> Lots of drugs. Uh, what the parents didn't need to know. Uh, going back in time 10 years ago to when I was about 19, my parents got tickets to see the Australian Pink Floyd, a very talented cover band. Uh -huh. They were going to be playing The Wall in its entirety. So naturally, I decided uh, to get some psychedelic enhancements. I'd only tried mushrooms once before this and ended up eating an entire eight the magic mushrooms in the bathroom before the show. I was frying my brains out, sitting next to my parents, thinking the walls were breathing. They had this giant inflatable pig come out of the stage right when I was peeking, and I'm sure the band could hear me yelling, Oh my God, it's Pigzilla. <laughs> Needless to say, I had an amazing time, and my parents never knew I was out of my mind high. Uh, good times, guys. Uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, since the radio reception in my car totally sucks, I'm always a day late and a dollar short uh, for your show. So I listen to your show uh, via the podcast while driving. Anyway, as far as bad drivers go, this goes back to all those cars we were saying were bad drivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the model of the car that's a dead giveaway. Uh, it's the handicapped driver designation. If any vehicle has a handicapped designation, rest assured, it's a reflection of driving skills. Love the show. Keep up the good work. That from Keith. Keith, I don't know wow. how that works, but uh, I don't think it works that way. A little aggressive. He is. Mm -hmm. uh, but we read them as they come in, you know. Uh, what I couldn't believe uh, someone thought was normal is my coworker. One day during the disgusting work talk, this guy says he wipes from the front. After he takes a dump, he wipes sitting, but through the front of his legs. Says he just wipes till he feels he's done. Also said that those of us <laughs> who stand and lean are law wrong. I don't know where he learned to wipe. Um, I think maybe his mom. Uh, that from Steven. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a very healthy debate about how to wipe your ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And, and people uh, get hostile, man. Oh, yeah. Real hostile. Uh, and finally, uh, peanut butter sandwich. Ola Bacholas, you guys were talking about how you like your peanut butter sandwiches. Reminded me of something from my childhood. Growing up, I had a friend who lived with her Native American grandparents. One day, I was over for lunch, and they asked me what I wanted. 
And I said a peanut butter sandwich. So they made me a sandwich with peanuts and butter. Mm. They had no idea what I was talking about and probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> that from the Mexican mailman. All right, uh, still to come on the program, we will drink and toast with a shot of the day boat first. Now, the men's room wants to know... Less. Yay! Time once again for Who Sucks Less. Excuse me, Phil Hill, you bring us uh, three stories, each week from the news. All three of them equally suck, but it's yeah. up to us to uh, figure out which of these three stories suck the least. Now, if you like the men's room on uh, Facebook or follow us on Twitter, at Men's Room Live, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yeah, and indeed, we have uh, three winners today, as we do every week, and they'll compete against each other, of course, to find out who sucks the least. So in this case, uh... We go to Oklahoma, we will go to Florida, and we will go to Indiana. We are all over the map. Uh, but in Oklahoma, that's where a school closed after parents declared, and I quote, hunting season on a 12-year-old student because that 12-year-old student is a transgender. In the state of Florida, a shooting match between two groups of people outside, it ended with a 7-year-old girl getting fatally shot in the head with a stray bullet. She was sitting in the car with her father when this happened. And then we go to Indiana, where a young boy there ingested 180 times the lethal dose of meth that was left on the counter at his house. And then worse, his father refused to give him help initially because he didn't want to go to jail. But let's go to Oklahoma. Uh, a middle school there, they're closed following violent threats by parents on social media against Maddie, who's a 12-year-old transgender student who identifies as female and used the girl's bathroom. That's what started this whole thing. So she had been using the staff bathroom at her old school, but then she used the girl's bathroom at the new school because she didn't know where the staff bathroom was. She was then accused of peeping under the bathroom stall. Anyway, that's when the threats began on a private parent's Facebook group for the school. The parents called Maddie it. They called her a thing. They suggested that her genitalia be mutilated to make her officially female. Quote, a good sharp, uh, a good sharp knife will do the job real quick. Remember, these are adults talking about the kid. One said it was, quote, hunting season on them kind and said there was no bag limit. On and on it goes. I think you get the idea. It doesn't get better. All right, now let's go to Florida where police are searching for suspects. They shot and killed a seven-year-old Florida girl. She was at a shopping plaza. She's sitting in a vehicle with her father on Saturday evening when a stray bullet struck her in the head and he killed her. The shooting happened about six at night. It's in Jacksonville. And police said multiple shots rang out during a confrontation between, quote, two unrelated groups. Circumstances of that are not immediately clear, but the gunfire erupted. And then a stray bullet ended up striking her in the head while sitting in the car. They took her to the hospital, but she died not long after they got there. Now let's go to Indiana where a boy died after ingesting methamphetamine. According to the Jackson County uh, detective, Tom Baker, he said that Curtis Coleman III, that would be the child, eight years old, he had nearly 18,000 nanograms of methamphetamine found in his bloodstream. To give you perspective on this, the lethal amount is 100 nanograms. This kid had 18,000 nanograms. He was at the house of his father when he consumed the drug. The father neglected to seek medical treatment once he noticed the kid was not, quote-unquote, feeling well. So he drove to the kid's grandparents' home instead. He tried to prevent them from calling 911, but eventually they did. They called police. He was taken to the medical center. He died moments later. His father was charged with neglect of a dependent causing death. So those are your upbeat stories today. The school in Oklahoma were parents calling a transgender kid it and all the rest of that saying they, it's hunting season. We have the shooting match between two groups of idiots in Florida. Stray bullet hits a seven-year-old girl, takes her out, and then the boy in Indiana, they ate his father's meth stash and ended up dying from an overdose. Mm. Good time. Yeah, I mean, I get that a lot, you know, you're going to look at the one in Oklahoma and go, the other two stories involve the death. Absolutely. But I would also say, like, I think the, the Indiana one sucks the most. With the methamphetamines, and then the kid doesn't really get help right. and dies. But I might say uh, the Florida story sucks the least. Like, I feel it's ya. terrible that somebody got killed, but that was that wasn't the intent. There's no intent. It was a stray bullet. Whereas you could also the, the, say that the, the dad in Indiana season, had no intent, but then again, he didn't save his kid. But he didn't so save his right, kid that, either. That's the right. difference. Whereas, on like that. the parents in Oklahoma, like that's setting such a 
a bad a example. Year old kid. Right. Like, I, I don't think that kid's out of danger for for a long time. No. I'm still going to say drive-by shootings are bad between groups of people or anybody yeah, shooting in any group of people. I think public. we all agree. I think so most I, people are down I, I with that. I still think that pretty I know we're desensitized to guns, but I'm still going to say that that sucks a lot because a seven-year-old's life was ended. Sure. Uh, the boy in Indiana, his life was ended. Uh, hopefully, the, uh, God, man, you wish you could just send people like uh, money so they could, you know, I don't know, go to a different school, move. Something. Yeah, I don't anything. know. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. I'm going to say that... Uh, my mind, Oklahoma, I guess, sucks the least. Oklahoma. But based on the, exact the parents? Same, based on the exact same principle that you said, why not? Which is right, because nobody died. Right. And I get There's that. no right answer, man. Yeah. I mean, because, the, see, here's the horrible thing about this particular segment. They, they all suck. But at some point, you have to justify. <laughs> who sucks the least? Like, there's some small amount of defense you have to give for someone who sucks entirely. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that... <sighs> That's the only thing that makes it hard. I mean, honestly, like... You, you think the school in Oklahoma could figure a way to settle this? But what are you going to do, man? You'd like uh, to think that. But you would like to think they could do that, but you'd also like to think the goddamn grown-ass adults wouldn't be on a school Facebook page threatening to, to kill... To a child. Right. So, I mean, for what you hope for, like, to me, that already got washed away. Facebook is a, a funny place. And if you like the men's room on Facebook, uh, the debate <laughs> yeah, yeah. rages on there on uh, who sucks less. Also, still to come, we will drink and tell us with the uh, shot of the day and the return of the word as we go to the movies for some of the best and most popular ad-libbed lines of all time. And there's some of the most famous ones uh, uh, of all time. That's coming up with the word uh, on the way next. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. Coming up with your toes with a shout-out day, but first, word. time for the word. As uh, here are a few of the 50 most famous movie lines, believe it or not, that were ad-libbed. Now, it's shocking to me how much of this stuff was not uh, part of the script initially, but some of the most famous lines that you can remember, believe it or not, ad-libbed. Let's start with uh, one of your favorite movies. But wait, you got to do me one favor, man. Mm -hmm. All right? You do your best imitation of the line. Okay. You can't just say, do you feel lucky, punk, do you? All right. I'm in a glass case of emotion. Anchorman. Anchorman is correct. <laughs> Will Ferrell improvised that scene as he was trying to make it back to the uh, anchor desk on time. And he didn't. Veronica Cornerstone actually got her first time and she did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's Johnny. Talked about that one earlier from The Shining. Uh, Jack Nicholson shouted, here's Johnny, about three times. He did 59 other takes, Damn. knocking down doors, trying to get that scene uh, correct. Here's one we all know. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Days Confused. Days yes. and Confused. McConaughey ad-libbed that entire scene. Basically, the director just decided to throw him in and say, like, do your thing, man. And he just whirled up and went, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. well, he got the job by going to a bar in Austin. He's McConaughey being McConaughey. You're going to need a bigger boat. Uh, Roy Jones. Snyder. Yeah, absolutely. He uh, That was a big line, but it actually wasn't the original line. The line was something of an uh, on-set inside joke about a too small boat the production team was uh, using, but they tossed that out and went with a different one. Uh, from Empire Strikes Back. I know the line. Harrison Ford, standing there right before he's about ready to be frozen. Princess Leia says, I love you. And the line is supposed to be, I love you too. <laughs> Harrison Ford said, that's not what Han Solo would say. So Princess Leia says, I love you. And he says, I know. <laughs> and off he went. <laughs> yeah. And finally, Robert De Niro, are you talking to me? They said, be yourself. Look into a mirror. What would you say? And he's looking at himself and he's looking back. And he's like, nice. Speaks to himself in the mirror. Are you talking to me? There you go. On the world. All right, Wobbin, if we made it to drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Three time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Stephen Throwhill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast an unidentified 36-year-old man from Uttar Pradesh, India. I believe our very own Mike Hawk will cover this in more detail in headlines, but in spite of that, this man... Deserves a shot. I believe this guy truly, truly, well, put it this way. He deserves to drink a shot. In this case, he took 100 milligrams of something I can't pronounce, but essentially it's branded as Viagra, right? So, uh, as advertised, he got an erection, but instead of putting it to use, he fell asleep. No big deal. Uh, he fell asleep, but his penis did not. In fact, the next morning, his four-year-old son tripped and fell over his stiff penis after jumping on him to wake him up. Now, when his kid hit it, he fractured his dad's penis. 
Dad waited two days before contacting the doctor, and at that point, it was, and I quote, the color and shape of an eggplant. Ooh. Doctors repaired the damage, and the man is expected to make a full recovery. They get very graphic what they explain, and I'll be honest with you, I'm reading this story this morning, and I realize my knees were touching. Ooh. Like, the more I read, I just, like, instinctively started protecting all of my junk. Fractured penis, that really bothers me, man. It really, really bothers me. All of that said, I have to think his father's well hung if his kid tripped over his erection. I mean, so let's, on the side, this dude is doing all right, right? It's a bummer. He went to sleep. It is, man. Actually, I think he had sex with his wife, but it still didn't go away. He took a lot of milligrams. Yes, he did. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! Let's get to Color 9 on the line right now for Profile This, 844-999-OLA. OLA, the shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.